few points on business planning and strategy specifically from the sort of small perspective. Um, some common challenges that you will all start to face when we talk about strategy and planning. One is that usually you tend to be caught in the survival game, and I think that's pretty understandable. If you run out of money and you have to shut down your company, then it doesn't really matter how great your long term strategy was if you can't survive in the short term. But if you do aim to do something, Big or go international or something, you need to try to balance between these two. Survive today but also plan for longer future. Also, people sometimes tend to think of strategy or planning as a document you must do or an event you will do strategy now and then it's done and then we can forget about it for a year. When it actually should be a continuous way of thinking, sort of keeping in mind what your longer term goals are. Sometimes you need to do the paper as well for a funder or somebody else, but that, that's not, that shouldn't be the main thing. And then some, sometimes people get sampled in very complicated strategy planning tools that are actually meant for corporate environment. Maybe because they studied strategy in university and somebody thought them of a great model that IBM uses, or they happen to stumble on a consultant who is using a model and wants to sell that. And the models can be good, but you don't necessarily need the same tools that the you know, company with 10,000 employees globally uses a little bit different tools for planning strategy than somebody who's just starting up and has a handful of people. So if we, I'm assuming that you agree with me that you don't need to do the same process IBM uses. So then what's needed if we look at the sort of bare minimum? Some sort of analysis of your business and environment is sometimes good to do. It helps you to think about stuff from a sort of outsider point of view. SWOT analysis is good enough, at least. Strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. I'm sure most of you know this. If you don't, you can Google it. You'll find a lot of advice on how to do that. So you think about a little bit of your idea and your business from different points of view and use that to help you plan. It's good to have clear and tangible vision, and by clear and tangible, I specifically mean that it includes what you're doing, why are you doing it, what is the problem that you're solving, for who, who's your customer, who, who wants to buy your product, and what, what is specifically the need that they have, and how are you going to solve the problem. Sort of practically, I've seen pretty many uh, visions from Tanzanian software companies that say we aim to be Tanzanian leader on creating good quality software for our customers reliably. You know, great stuff, but doesn't tell anything about what you actually are doing. So, you know, your vision should state so that at least yourself you understand what is it exactly that you're trying to do. Who's the customer? What's the problem? It doesn't matter if it doesn't sound like this great vision speak that you can find from books or internet, as long as you understand. And then you should have a plan on how to get there. You know what you aim to do, then you have to plan pretty roughly. It's better to be roughly right than spend a lot of time being precisely wrong. If you start going into too much detail, then you know things change. So have a plan and know sort of pretty much how how you plan to go there. And then every now and then you have to check whether the vision is still valid or do you have, have you changed your mind? Do you now see that actually no, my customers are not going to be the, these people, they are going to actually be those people. And, or if, even if the vision is, is the same, is the plan realistic? Have you now learned something that shows your original way of going to where you want to go is maybe no longer the best way? And then you change. It's better to plan something and decide something and get going and then make new, better decisions when you when you learn more. Not necessarily spend huge amounts of time creating a big plan. Also because most of the problems that small companies have are not actually strategy related. If you look at the reasons why SMEs fail, and I think we all know that a lot of them fail, 
couple of problems that come. One is bad management. Don't know how to manage a company. You don't necessarily have the right skills in your team. You don't have the right tools. Or there's a personality problem or something. That that can is one very common problem. The other one is financials. There isn't enough understanding in the company on how how the money stuff works. You know, cash flow, predicting cash flow, understanding that if you have to pay the salaries this month, it doesn't help that you are getting a good deal six months from now. Planning, working with different ways of financing your company, and also greed, fights, stuff like that. Money is a difficult thing, even when you have it, but specifically if you don't have it. Then the bad operations. You have a great product, but you can't deliver it. You don't can't manage your customer service. Your equipment breaks down. You don't have backups. You know stuff, stuff like that. That you you know in principle companies should know to take care of, but they don't always know how to do it. And then yeah, infrastructure. You, we know that that's a problem in Tanzania. And if you are in IT, you have to also worry about the power, the internet connections backups, viruses, a lot of these things. So these are not actually strategy, these are basic rudiments of the company. So if you spend a huge amount of time spending, you know, developing a world class strategy, taking all the latest strategy books and all of that, and then your company goes under because you didn't realize that you're going to run out of money three months before your development is finished. Strategy wasn't that helpful. So you are on, okay on these four areas, you know what you want to do, who your client is, and you have some sort of rough plan on how to get there. I, I'd say you are much better off than most of your peers. And I don't think you need to worry about much more at this point. But that's it. Thanks.